Good evening, good evening, my friends. Today, today we're going to talk about spiritual gifts a little bit more. And there's a couple things that I think, you know, like from my experience in the body of Christ, just some things that I don't really see taught very well or taught at all. And uh, one of those things is, is dealing with spiritual gifts. Um, it's important to have complete understanding about the gifts because you don't want to go there's two extremes in the body there's one extreme where people act like fools and, and roll around and and all they want to do is manifest um, spiritual gifts and then you have this other uh, extreme of people who don't believe the gifts exist at all and typically it's very hard to find the balance there's, there's not very many people that are in the middle where it's like, okay, we believe the gifts exist, but we don't uh, abuse the gifts or we don't make our walk only about spiritual gifts. So let's talk about that. 1 Corinthians 12, 27 says, Now you are the body of Christ and members in particular. And God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles, have all the gifts of healing, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret, but covet earnestly the best gifts. And yet I show unto you a more excellent way. And he goes on to talk about love. But in the body of Christ, in the body, the Spirit has set this structure that there is, God has set that there's going to be apostles, there's going to be prophets, there's going to be teachers, there's going to be miracles, there's going to be gifts of healing, help, governments, and diversity of tongues. Tongues is at the bottom of the list, the least important. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't say that because it's a gift, but just saying. Um, but it's important to understand that there will still be apostles. There will still be prophets. There will still be teachers. There's still going to be miracles. There's still going to be gifts of healing. There's still going to be gifts of government. There's still going to be gifts of help and diversity of tongues. But not everybody in the body is going to be able to do these things. Not everybody is going to be an apostle. Not everybody is going to be a prophet. Not everybody is going to be a teacher. Not everybody is going to be a worker of miracles. Not everybody is going to speak in tongues. I love that it says not everybody speaks in tongues. Do all speak with tongues? No. No, there might, some people may not receive the gift of tongues, okay? So it's important to understand that, especially if you are taught that you're not saved unless you speak in tongues or you're not filled with the Spirit unless you speak in tongues. Um, because there's other ways for the Spirit to manifest in your life. The first time I received the Spirit, I prophesied to a guy. I didn't even know what was happening. It was crazy, but I didn't speak in tongues up until a couple of years ago um, and that was you know and I got saved in 2004 that's a long story but but it's important to find balance it's important to understand that in the body of Christ all these gifts are at work now everybody doesn't have the same gifts and they're not supposed to okay there's a diverse body and all the different members are working together. They can't have all the same gifts and the same functions. Otherwise, it wouldn't work as a unit for the body. Everybody has to be different and function differently and have different giftings. Um, so, but it says that we can earnestly desire the best gifts. So there is something to be said here where God's giving us hope to if we uh maybe if we think our gift isn't that great uh we can desire um greater gifts like like i remember um after being convinced of corinthians 12 13 and 14 i was like oh i would covet rather to prophesy so i prayed for the gift of prophecy you know that was what i wanted and there's been times where i've prayed for the gift of healing and i, I kind of let it go but I might bring that, take that back up again, um, because, you know, if the Lord's willing, I'll, I'll receive it, you know, but I don't know if that's how it works. 
It says covet earnestly the best gifts, but I don't know if the Spirit is willing to give everybody just any gift because it says the Spirit gives to every man severally as he wills. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. And, it, and it's different for every person. So according to the faith and proportion and measure that God has appointed to us, that is the measure that we will take. But God is able to, to increase us and, and give us more. But we have to be faithful with what we've had already. Okay, that's what's important to understand. If you haven't been faithful with the gift that you've been given, why would God increase it? But remember the parable of the talents. The guy got one talent, he was faithful with it, then God gave him more. You know what I mean? Or maybe it was five, I don't remember. But either way, if you're faithful with what God gives you, then there is opportunity for increase. But if you're not faithful with the gift that you've been given, how could you expect? To receive anything more so i hope that maybe that gives us a little bit more insight into spiritual gifts and callings and uh, do everything to make your calling election sure if you don't know what your gift is uh, figure it out and because in christ you will receive something he ascended on high and he gave gifts to men for the edification of the body so whatever the spirit has given you figure it out and stir it up and put it into practice, be faithful with it, and expect to receive more. Amen.